Yeah. Hello. 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 Uh, I want to start out with a song by a friend of mine, Donna Carey. It's called Real Love. All right. It would be refreshing to have that, wouldn't it? Yay! It would be real refreshing <laughs> yes, to have real love, which of course defines as something that uh, doesn't change, mm -hmm. something that's mm -hmm. without fear, uh, mm -hmm. guilt, jealousy, insecurity. All, the, all those other good things that mm -hmm. we put in love sometimes because we feel them ourselves. So mm -hmm. sometimes it seems like it's beyond our capacity to get beyond those feelings. And so we say, oh, that's part of love too. <coughs> you know, yeah. I, I, I love you, but I'm really afraid of you. I love you and I really feel jealous. I love you. No, that's fear. The Course calls it an attractive form of fear. It's the kind of fear you like, the good juicy fear. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so we, we know, yeah, we, yeah, we know how to do conditional love, but but we don't know how to do unconditional uh -huh. love. So we make it that love is conditional because that's what we can handle. The, it's not really hard to love because it's not anything that we make. Right. Wow. It, it's not. It, it will never be something you can make. It'll never be something you can do. It's something you can allow. It's something you can get out of the way. So they can come through you as it is, but it's never gonna—you're wow. never gonna get to the point you're gonna figure out how to be unconditionally loving. But what you can do is learn how to change your perception enough that when something comes up, you can give yourself a new way of looking at it that would allow you to still have peace of mind. And then out of that peace of mind, you can hear your guidance. So the purpose of the course in miracles is to give you new interpretations of everything you experience, so that you will have peace of mind no matter what's happening. You know, it could be what you call a tragedy. But there's a way to look at it that you will feel a lot more peace about it than you would if you didn't have a new way of looking at it. I often cite the example this year of my sister making the transition in a house fire. And I've never been so thankful in my life as I was during those times for the teachings of the Course in Miracles because it, I still felt my pain. I still let it come up. I still felt it. And, and I, I refrain from killing people who would try to tell me that, you know, well, you know, she's in a better place. Great. But I still, I still want to feel my feelings. I don't want to pretend like I didn't feel my grief to be spiritual. To right. be spiritual means that you do allow yourself to feel all of your feelings. And that you look at those feelings with the eyes of love. That you look at those feelings with the eyes of truth. All your feelings are cool. So anyway, even when you get upset with somebody, yeah. you should look at it and go, wow, what a wondrous creation I just made. Wow. <laughs> Boy, I really messed I really am angry today. Woo, didn't I do that good? <laughs> that was some of the best anger I've ever done. That was... <laughs> That was right up there at the top of being angry. You should look at everything that you do with all kinds of wonder. So this is the song that I, it's so cool. I like it. So I hope you do too. It sounds like you're up down the street with a great bluegrass band that's so soulful. But it's the lyrics. She writes all her music, and I love the lyrics. There's a love. Thank you. 
problem is an identity problem. It's a problem in who you think you are and what you think you are. And out of that misperception, you are creating pain for yourself and fear for yourself. So um, the only guidelines to the Course in Miracles is that you don't have to believe it, you don't have to accept it, you don't have to welcome it. You don't have to believe it, you don't have to accept it, you don't have to welcome it. You don't have to believe it, you don't have to accept it, you don't have to welcome it. Did I say you don't have to believe it? You don't have to accept it? You don't have to welcome it? Some of the ideas that the Course in Miracles presents are startling. Some of the ideas the Course in Miracles presents are hard to believe. And it doesn't matter whether you feel that way about it. It's normal to feel that way about it. It also says that um, you're not really asked to analyze and judge the ideas at all. Uh, but if you use it, you'll see that it works. If you use it, you will see that it works. No amount of analyzing is going to prove the truth of the Course because it is a reflection of a new thought system and a different thought system from the thought system that we learn in the world, from the thought system that we learn in the body, from the thought system that we've learned as humans. It's a different way of looking at things. And since it's a different way of looking at things, then that, is it possible that that would mean that it wouldn't fit into your accepted way of looking at things? Mm -hmm. Does that mean that I might say something that's different from what you believe? Yeah. Okay, so can we all agree that this might be different from some of the things that you believe? Yeah. Is that cool? The reason why I say that is that, is that what causes a lot of conflict with just hearing it is, first of all, is the erroneous, the erroneous belief that you, need to, you have to believe it. And the other one is that a person will have a tendency to compare 
what they already believed or what the Course in Miracles is teaching and try to figure it out by comparing the two thought systems, which does not work because the two thought systems are totally opposite. Mm -hmm. And there are two different worlds that go with the two thought systems. There are two different worlds that go with the two thought systems. So if you're in the thought system of fear, separation, uh, I am different, I am separate, and I am a victim of a situation or circumstance. If, you're, if your position right now is that, you know, the government really is determining your happiness and how well you're taken care of, and which party is in power determines your joy, and that everything that's going wrong in your life is because of your childhood, or the fact that your boss doesn't like you, then you're in the old thought system that's different from the Course in Miracles thought system. And so you're seeing a world that's a reflection of the belief of, in victim consciousness. The world reflects back to you your own consciousness, so you have proof all around you through your perception that you're right about being a victim because the universe always says yes. So if you go, I'm a victim of everything around you, then it will always look like someone's doing something against you, and you can use that as proof to say you're right about that. But you must understand that the outer is a reflection of the inner. So the only reason why you're seeing that witness to you being a victim is because of your belief in being one to begin with. So therefore, you can't really use your perception as the proof that this thought system isn't true. Because your perception is only witnessing to what you already believe is true. You haven't probably accepted the new thought system based on love and unity. So you may not have as many witnesses in your physical reality to, that, to the fact that love and unity is true. In my personal reality, at this particular point in time, 90% of the time, the witness that I'm receiving from my personal day-to-day -day world is, I am loved. Yay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, there was a time when that was not my consistent perception. But there was also a time that I didn't think that I was responsible for my experience, that I'm linked to love, that I have power to determine how I see. As I changed my belief system through the Course in Miracles, then my physical reality had to start to conform with these new beliefs because that's the way that it works. Now one of the cool things is that there is a limit to pain. So therefore, if you find yourself procrastinating about doing what's necessary to allow yourself to be happy, be rest assured, no one suffers forever. Everyone has a limit. Some, pe some, people, some people's limits to pain are so much so that it just, it's amazing to me sometimes, the kind of stuff that, that people will put up with over and over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, but there is a limit to that. And sometimes when you try to fix people, you slow down the length of time that it would take for that person to hit bottom and make a change. Right. So sometimes all your desires to help people just slow them down. Right. Sometimes they need to crash. And then when they crash, they go, oh my God, I, I cannot have a relationship like this again. I've got to do it differently this time. You know, so be glad that we were created by something that loves us so much that there is a limit to pain. Yeah. Also, um, the Course in Miracles is based on the, pr the premise that we're all one and that we are all love, that love is what we are. It's not what we make. There's no such thing as making love with somebody. You can't make love. It's not like a cake. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to go and get it. You know, I'm going to make some love with you tonight, baby. Here we go. You know, the Course in Miracles would define it as making fear. That would be much more accurate to say, I'm going to make fear with you tonight, baby. Because it's usually the ones that we make love to that we have the most fear about them making love to somebody else or sharing that love with somebody else, or losing that love. You know, uh, you can allow love. You can allow love. You can allow love to come through you, and, and you could use love, what you call love making, as a physical symbol of the willingness to let that love come through. But you can't make love. No more than you can make a tree, in a sense, even though one day you'll find out you made the tree, but that's a whole other class. <laughs> hey, girl, is it making you know, a baby making love if we're all love? Nah. Making a baby is making a vehicle for the soul that already mm -hmm. exists to come into yeah. the world. You, a, a baby, a body is, a, is an avatar. It's a vehicle for us to function in this plane. That's the biggest error we already make is that we look at little bodies and big bodies and we say, oh, that is the person. No, it's not. 
That's the medium of communication in this plane for us to recognize the truth about ourselves. Yeah. And then we get here, and then we're told from the day that we're born that we are the body, and then it seems like we are the body because we feel what? We feel pleasure in the body, we feel pain with the body. And so therefore, I, I do this, you know, I cut my finger yesterday, and I go, ooh, okay, then that made me want to identify with my body more. <clears throat> and, oh, I must be this body, I just felt the pain. I must be the body I just felt that pleasure. Ooh, I must be the body I just felt that pleasure. Ooh, I must be the body I just felt that pain. So I don't want to really get deep into the whole body thing because um, it's the part that's usually the hardest for people to believe because that's what they're most identified with, and that's okay. Because today we're going to finish up on this section that I've been doing about how to release fear and conflict and to let fear and conflict go in different situations. Uh, and so it would be more meaningful to you if you took a situation in your life that you are, are, are experiencing any lack of peace in. I like to say it that way because you know people will look at you right in the face and say they don't have any fear, which is ridiculous. But that's okay. Sometimes the only way that people can feel good is through denial. And so you don't want to get a person out of denial until you're ready to give them something better. <laughs> I said it again. You don't want to get a person out of denial until you're ready to give them something better because sometimes the only reason why people are happy is because they're totally in denial about what's really going in the, on in themselves and in their life. They're, they're not really willing to look honestly at a situation. So they'll say, well, I don't have that feeling. And, and, and beings in male bodies, men are taught from, from you know, as soon as they're born, you never show fear. You know, if you show fear, you're not a man. So, so we grow up learning that we're not supposed to reflect at all what you consider to be feminine emotions. So a lot of times, it, 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 it's kind of funny because in this reality that we're having right now, it's like for those in female bodies, it's more acceptable for them to express their masculine now as well as their feminine. But males still don't have that luxury as much yet. So in a lot of ways, you find that those in female bodies are, will be more balanced than those in male bodies because it's more okay by society for them to cry and be in charge of a company. <clears throat> Where it's still with males, is about, well, no. I have no fear about anything. So, they, so men tend to show their fear through anger. Mm -hmm. So when I'm afraid, then, I, then I'm ready to fight and I'm ready to attack because that's how we show our fear, which is really a stupid way to do it because <laughs> it really creates attack for you because whatever you give is what you receive. And so the, the masculine has more of a desire to release anyway. The, whole, the masculine is more attracted to things that are death-defying. That's one of the natures of it because it likes to penetrate a reality go into another level. So you, that's why you find sometimes men to be the first ones they're going to charge first, you know, be right at the head. Because in a way we want to get out of here anyway. And that's what we, <laughs> you know, that way we can do it and get a little, get a medal or something in the process. You know? <laughs> get the heck out of Dodge, I'm telling you. <clears throat> so uh, before I get into the fear and conflict part, there's a lesson in the workbook that I want to share with you that um, I think it's, it's, it's one that, that it would be great if you kind of, to me it's like, it's like the whole shebang. Uh, it's lesson 325 in the Course in Miracles workbook. And the lesson is, all things I think I see reflect ideas. All things I think I see reflect ideas. All things I, notice it says, all things I think I see. All things I think I see reflect what? Ideas. So I'm going to read this real quick and then I'm going to go back through it because it's, it's, it, it says it all. It's basically saying, the, 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 if you can get this premise, this is the premise of power. It helps you get it in my body because the body is the seat of memory. The Course teaches that all your memories are stored in your body. All your memories are stored in your body. That's why even though you cut yourself when you were a little child, the scar is still there even though the cells in your body have been replaced many times, depending on how old you are. Every seven years, the cells, so my cells have changed so many times, it's ridiculous I even have scars, but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother ball game. So, so when you, when you can feel it, it's not an intellectual trip, then you can let it be in your body. So that's why I like to use a lot of music and a lot of rhythm and feeling the energy, so that it's not just a head trip. 
Okay, here we go. It goes something like this. All things I think I see reflect ideas. This is Salvation's keynote. What I see reflects a process in my mind. Got that? What I see reflects a process in my mind. What you see reflects a process in your mind. What you see reflects a process in your mind, which starts with your idea of what you want. So what you see starts with the process in your mind that starts with your idea. Did it say your idea? Did it say your idea? My idea. Your idea of what you want. Your idea of what you want. Then, from there, your idea of what you want, the mind makes up an image of the thing that the mind desires. The mind makes up an image of the thing that it desires. Your mind first thinks of what it would like, and then it makes up an image of that. So if you say you like, you, you say you want a relationship, usually in some case, some image of what you like comes up. You know, when you say anything, you have an image that comes up with that idea. So the Course says your mind makes up an image of what your mind desires, and what your mind desires is something that your mind judges valuable. What your mind desires is what your mind judges valuable and therefore seeks to find. So you can tell what you really find to be valuable because it will be the thing that you are seeking, whatever the thing that you're putting your energy into, whatever you are seeking, whatever you are seeking, that is the thing that you value. That is the thing that you desire. Whatever you are seeking is the thing that you desire. I don't care what you say. But the thing that you go out here today and you want to make sure that that happens, the thing that you put your energy into, that's what you really value. I can say I value God. I can say I value truth. I can say I value being more loving. But how much energy, how much time do I invest in that every day? It's the stuff I invest my energy in that I really value. If I watch TV all day long and I'm not knocking TV, then that's what I really value. I can say I value something else, but what I seek is what I value. So that then you go on and say, these images are then projected outward. These images are then projected. <laughs> images in your mind. <laughs> I'm looking at the images in my mind right now. I had an idea of what I would like. I would like to teach a course in miracles. I would like to have people that were sent by the Holy Spirit for me to share the course in miracles with so that I can remember it. I'm the learner, I'm the learner, I'm the learner. I'm teaching this class so I can remember it. So I had an idea of what I wanted. I had an image in my mind. And so therefore I saw this as valuable. And then I sought to make it happen. And what happened according to this is that I projected this image and now I'm looking upon it. Now I esteem it as real and I guard it as my own. Now I see it's real. That's how everything happens. I'm going to repeat that one more time. What you see reflects a process in your mind that starts with the thing of what you want in your mind. And when you see it in your mind, when you see it in your mind, you desire it, you judge it valuable, and then your mind projects it. And then you see it, and you experience it. Woo, that's kind of deep, isn't it? <laughs> now, what the Course then says is this. From insane wishes come an insane world. From insane wishes come an insane world. From an insane belief about relationships come a very insane relationships. From lack thoughts about abundance come what you perceive as being lack in your life. So from uh, insane wishes come an insane world. Look how insane, uh, insane Wish to be persecuted, to see myself as worthless, to see myself as not enough, to see myself as not deserving love. If I have a wish to see myself that way, I will have a world that reflects that back to me and it will seem like people don't treat me right, the low down dogs. <coughs> <coughs> comes a world condemned. So if you pull a judgment, you're condemning your world now. If you pull up judgment, you're just condemning everything and everybody now. You may even find yourself condemning me. You may find yourself even condemning me right now because it's coming from your judgment. It's coming from what? And from forgiving thoughts, ah, oh, a gentle world comes forth from forgiving thoughts a gentle world comes forth. And how can you tell when you're in the gentle world? 
the court says, because it didn't have mercy on you. When I grew up, that's what, that was a real popular statement around with black folk when I was growing up. You know, you, you know your elders always said, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother was always saying, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> you know, I'm so thankful for the, more and more, I'm very thankful for, the, for uh, how much religion permeated the culture growing up uh, in a black body in the South. Because black folk, that's how they made it, especially my parents and their parents, was because uh, in the South there was, we had projected and created uh, what appeared to be racial oppression. And so the only way we made it was through our religious faith, our spiritual faith. So, so your elders were always, no matter what was happening, just turn to the Lord, go to the Lord, just ask the Lord for help. The Lord is going to take care of it. The Lord is going to help. So I grew up with a, a constant focus on God and Jesus, uh, but the only problem was they just threw that hell and sin stuff in there, and that kind of blew it for me. <laughs> and, uh, because it, it, because, it, because it, simply never rang, and it simply never rang true in my soul. Yeah. And I, and I just exactly. couldn't understand why people could believe it. But yeah. souls are at different levels of awakening, and some of us come here more awake than others to the truth about ourselves. And whatever, whatever level I was, I just could not accept the fact that I was created by this creator that would burn me in hell forever because of music that I was listening to. Or because I just could see if there was a creator outside of myself, I could just see that creator just trying to run the whole universe, right? And then all of a sudden go, oh my God, she has on a miniskirt. Stop everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's so childlike when you think about it. But you know what? I'm thankful for everybody being exactly where they are, learning exactly what they're learning, because whatever they're learning is part of what they needed to learn for their own awakening. So the truth is there's no one that's in the wrong place, even if they're in what appears to be a fundamental belief system that you may think that you are not about. But what happens a lot of times with people in new thought, in, in my perception from studying for years, is they throw out the baby with the bathwater. <laughs> it's like they, they don't like the idea of a sinful, guilty God, but somewhere along the line, the whole idea of God gets thrown out. Then they don't want to hear anything about a higher power, and they think it's about empowering their own ego enough to take care of themselves by themselves all the time. So it's still the ego. It's just a bigger, more overblown version of it. If you think you can really know what's best for you at every level based on your limited perception of reality. So what I liked was the whole idea of having a loving creator and being empowered and being a part of that creator, but without the guilt, fear, sin, attack aspect of it. So you are an idea. If everything is an idea, and if everything comes from an image and a projected idea, where did you come from then? You must be an idea in the mind that created you. If what you see in your life is a reflection of the ideas in your mind, where did you come from? Think about that for a second. If everything you see is a reflection of the ideas that you project, where did you come from? Then that would stand to reason that you must be an idea in the mind of something too. <laughs> and if that's true, that which created us, would it have, would it have created us to experience pain and conflict? and sickness. I mean, would a loving creator say, I'm going to create a creation, and I really want it to suffer. <laughs> I want it to have a hard time. I want it to struggle. I want it to have a foreclosure. No, none of that's necessary. Then people say, well, where did it come from? It came from a misperception in your mind about who you are, about forgetting that you are this unlimited being created by an unlimited being. So what happens if you created pain or fear or sickness in your life? Well, then that which created you, now check this out, that which created you will use what you created to take you past it, beyond it, to a healing. So it's a win-win situation anyway. Yeah. So don't think you have to go through pain in order to gain. If you believe you have to go through pain in order to gain, I guarantee you will have lots of pain in order to gain. But if you are a person who believes you have to have pain to gain, then why are you complaining about your pain? So you be thankful for it? If you're of the school that, well, it's not worth having unless you struggle, then what are you complaining about if you're struggling? It is a reflection of your desire to grow because you believe struggling is what makes you strong. You want to be strong. What are you complaining about if you're struggling? You should be glad you're successful at what you believe should happen for you to grow. 
So if you're struggling right now and you think struggle is good, you should feel good about your struggle. <laughs> But if you're someone who said, okay, I made the struggle and I'd like to have peace and harmony, yes, what type of perception do I need to have to transform this and transmute that? You always have that option to ask for another way of looking at it so that you can get out of the struggle. So it's a win-win anyway. If you create a situation that's bringing you pain, then that situation could be used to wake you up to the truth of who you are. But never tell yourself it's necessary to struggle and to go through pain in order to be happy. The struggle is coming from not listening. The struggle is coming from not listening. So whatever thought system you have right now about that, just understand, I'm not trying to change your mind. If you had a choice between what I'm telling you and what you think is true, go with you. Because you're going to do it anyway. You know you are. Right? In the end, you're going to go with what you believe. All I'm saying is this. Whatever, whatever belief you have, just understand this one thing, you will get my point. You will live and experience that belief. So you need to ask yourself, instead of defending it, you should ask yourself, is this thought going to bring me that which I feel is best for me? So if I, did, so if I have the thought, so I tried to get rid of the thought that I'm in a black body, I'm oppressed by people in white bodies. How is that going to serve me? And besides, when I asked my higher self why I was born in a black body in the South, I said, well, it's real easy. Um, you were a slave owner. Mm. And you wanted to see what it was like to experience mm. it from the other end of the spectrum. I wish I hadn't asked. But... <laughs> <laughs> you know, because if it's all one and it's all me, and this is kind of deep metaphysical <laughs> thought, but if it's all one and it's all me, right, then it means whatever I give, I'm giving to myself. So that means at some point, if I'm the perpetrator, mm -hmm. right, then at some point, yeah. I, I'm also going to be the victim. Yeah. Because it's all me. So I get a chance to experience the results of my actions from both sides. Because it's all me. If a person really took that to heart, we wouldn't have to worry about changes in behavior mm -hmm. or the way that people treat each other mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. If a person, that's why it's not that, that's why that whole idea of oneness is not the most popular idea to people sometimes. Because it's actually, the one advantage of separation is that it looks like you can do things to other people without you being affected by it. Mm -hmm. That's why people like to be separate. You're, you're hungry, I'm not. If we were one, then I'd have to feel your hunger pains. So I don't really want to know my oneness when I'm in a state of fear. You see what I'm saying? So, so the truth is, we are one. The truth is, we've forgotten it. The truth is, we're not alone. The truth is, we're innocent. The truth is, we're loved. And the truth is, we could have everything change today. Not tomorrow, not six weeks from now, not six months from now, but you could have your perception and your experience change today. Now, it could change. It's a matter of motivation. It's a matter of motivation. So it says, from insane wishes come what? An insane world. From judgment comes a world condemned. And from what? Forgiving thoughts, a gentle world comes forth with mercy for the Son of God to do what? Offer you a kindly home where you can rest a while before you journey on. Yeah. That's a good step. So basically, the Course is saying, this is supposed to be a vacation. <laughs> this is like you having a vacation and you go and you go to Hawaii on vacation and then you go to the employment office <laughs> and you totally forget but you you were there to have fun. This is not you you not you're here to play with your ability to create joyfully. That's why you're here. When you forget that you end up doing a job all day you don't like. Because you bought into the world's perception of what you should be. <laughs> And then you projected it. Because you accepted it as true, then you projected it. And so you think that your financial security is based on the laws of economics based on the world, instead of knowing you are sustained by the love of God. Doing this full time, primarily on a donation basis, has taught me more about money than I could have ever dreamed of in, in doing this. For, well, I had my 30th anniversary of studying the course last Sunday. And um, as soon as I got into Course in Miracles, I was so blown away by it that I read the entire te text the first month that I got it. Then it said in the teacher's manual, you teach best what you most need to learn. So in January of 1981, I started a Course in Miracles study group so I could make sure I was hearing it because I needed to learn it. And in the last 30 years, I haven't missed two months of teaching the course. 
Now, what's cool about that? Uh, I've heard, pe pe heard people say, well, if you've been studying for 30 years and you still get mad, what hope is there for me? <laughs> the truth is, I did the 30 years for you. Just like a person who's a race car driver, they've been doing it for 10 years and you want to learn, they did the 10 years for you. So if you were to listen to the race car driver, you could get 10 years of learning <laughs> in two weeks. And if you listen to me, you could save yourself 30 years of course stuff in two weeks. Wow. Because in 30 years, I've seen all the tricks that, that the ego will pull to keep a person from having joy. I might not be familiar with a lot of things in this dream, but I'm familiar with this. And so I'm here to save time. And of course, the miracles teach us that the purpose of a relationship is to save time. That if you're in a relationship and it's a really cool relationship, it should be saving you time. It shouldn't be delaying you. It should be moving you closer and closer to the reality of who you are. It should not be helping you forget how innocent you are. It should be helping you remember how innocent you are. So if I'm in a relationship and I'm with someone who's trying to shame me or guilt trip me, I realize I'm in the wrong relationship. In the story. We don't have to analyze. We don't have to process. If your goal is to make me feel guilty, you're the wrong person. Because that's not my goal. That's not saying that I don't make errors. It doesn't mean that errors are not for, are not for correction, although that can't be given another way of looking at things, but do not have the conscious goal of making me feel guilty in order to manipulate me. Sorry, it won't work. So I tend to go through relationships pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, because I won't stand for the stuff that most people stand for in a relationship. And so people get very enamored of me and they get unenamored really quick. <laughs> Because they're used to being able to manipulate people through guilt and anger, mm -hmm. you know. And it doesn't work with me the way that it used to. It just doesn't work with me. I can't see you as somebody who loves me who's trying to shame me. Mm -hmm. I just can't pull that off in my mind like I used to be able to do. When I felt like I deserved to be punished. When I felt like I deserved to be shamed, then I could definitely be manipulated back. Mm -hmm. You know, because I was getting what I, the image in my mind that I wanted. Because see, they showed up because of an image in my mind. The image in my mind was I deserved to be punished and that I was not okay. Then I had relationships that would show up to witness that to me and I, and I wanted a special relationship so they could happen most hours of the day. <laughs> because the rest of them would just be a few minutes at work or a few minutes in a you know, grocery store. But when you get your special little relationship, then you get the chance to have a full-time guilt trip <laughs> or a full-time innocence trip. <laughs> ah, ah. Uh, so if you want to have a relationship in your life in any form that's far beyond anything you could imagine, then right now take responsibility for that relationship and say that relationship happened because of my own consciousness and my own choice and because of some belief, conscious or unconscious, that I had about myself and stop blaming them. They just acted out what you wanted them to act out based on you, how you felt about yourself. And as long as you keep saying they did it to you, then you keep looping that over and over again and more and more people will come to you and do the same thing to you over and over again and you'll think you have a pattern which you do and then you will not want to trust new people as they come in. And you shouldn't because you haven't changed your mind so you're right. They're going to do the same thing the others did. As long as you think the same way, they will not be the same. Does that mean you stay with somebody forever no matter what because if you don't learn it with them, you're gonna, you just will learn it with them because uh, you got to learn it through somebody? No, not necessarily. Sometimes you need a fresh error. You know, sometimes you need a fresh opportunity to try the thing again because you don't have a personal history with this person, so you'll be more open to think it's a clean slate and try it for a while in a new way. But, with, if, you have, but if you haven't really done it in a new way within that, say, uh, six months, then you're going to start to see the same pattern happen all over again. So you get like a six-month break in my perception, where it really does seem like it's new. But if you come into that new relationship with that same old stuff you came in with the other, then you're going to find that they're strangely like the people that you've been dealing with before. The same thing is true if you move to another city, another country, another job. You get this little, this little window where it looks like you have a new job, but if you take the same old victim thought system into the new job, this, this new boss will seem just like the old boss and your coworkers will seem like your old coworkers, and, 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 and that's the way it works. Are uh, you with me? So you don't have to stay in something that makes you miserable because you know you got to learn a lesson anyway, so you just as well learn it with this person a certain a circumstance, unless you want to. If you want to, cool. And how do you know you're not ready to leave that person or situation in order to learn? You won't want to. You come up with every reason in the world why you can't leave or why you shouldn't leave. If you're one of those people, just say, I want to be here to learn the lesson through this situation and through this person. 
I want to learn my lesson. Why? Because I won't make a change. And then give yourself peace. Instead of, being, instead of telling yourself, I want to be somewhere else, but I really can't be somewhere else because I got nine children and I got to stay here, or whatever. If you are really sincere and you really deserve to go to a more loving experience, I don't care if you got a thousand children, you have God. You have a higher power. You're not trying to do it by yourself. Yeah, it's scary if you're trying to do it by yourself. Of course it's scary if you're a mother with six kids and you're trying to do it by yourself. But the whole premise of this is that you're not by yourself. Being by yourself is the old thought system. So you should be terrified if you think of change in terms of what you can do again on your own by yourself. You finna go figure this out again on your own. But that's the old thought system. You're not doing nothing different. Mm -hmm. But if you go, how can I remove the blocks of the awareness of the presence of God in me? How can I remove the blocks that, that keep me from knowing that I am supported by the universe and I am loved by the universe and that I do have guidance? That's new. Now, your old self, called the ego, your old self, that old programmed self, that self you've been with since the day you were born, it's not going to give up without a fight. Okay, it's going to try to convince you you're crazy for listening to this, you're crazy for doing this, and it's going to point out every way that it's insane for you to try to do it differently and why it won't work. Why? Because it's a psychic entity. It doesn't want to give up its control, its power. Your old self, it doesn't want to give up that power. It doesn't want to give up that control over you. So as soon as you say you're going to do something new, then it's the part of you that throws up every obstacle possible to make you believe that what you're trying to do isn't going to work. You have to you, believe me, I'm saving you 30 years. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm saving you 30 years. When you say you want to change, and you say you want to be more loving, and you say you want to be more prosperous, and you say you want to be more abundant, and you say then everything in you that doesn't believe you deserve that is going to try to stop you by giving you all kinds of situations and circumstances to make you say, that's crap, this stuff doesn't work, and to go back to be the old self you used to be. So if you're expected to be smooth sailing when you're ready to make a radical shift, you, you're kidding yourself because you're going to defend. Unless you're an exceptional being who has truly reached your limit, and you just know it's what you want and you have no doubt about that. All the way through to your guts. So I'm here to remind you that you do deserve that. I'm here to remind you that you want the ideas that come from your creator. If all the ideas create the reality that you are experiencing, then you want the ideas of something that loves you unconditionally. You want the ideas of something that is all powerful. You want the ideas of something that is infinitely powerful and knowledgeable. You want the ideas of something that's not you at this level. That's the smart person. The smart person realizes they create their reality and that they've made everything that they've experienced, but they don't try to make anything else. They go, I want to allow my higher self to make it through me. I want my higher self to be in control of my love life now. I want my higher self to be in control of my finances right now. I'm no longer going to try to make up anything from the perspective of being a separate being on my own in the world all alone. That's what conscious beings do. They don't go, oh, I create my reality, so let me go make up something else that I think I want that I think is going to make me happy. They go, oh, I created my reality. How can I let myself allow my reality to be created by something that's completely aware, completely loving in myself? in myself, in myself. Does this make sense to everyone? You know, um, actually, any questions or comments yeah. about what I've said so far? Did you say, how can I become aware of God's presence? Is that what you Yeah, how can I become aware? How can, how, the main thing is, how can I allow the blocks to my awareness to be removed? It's, it's good to think of it as an undoing process instead of a doing process. The, 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 we've already done enough. So yes. we need to stop doing. We need to undo. It's like my mother used to say to me when I was a little kid. Go sit over there in the corner until I fix dinner. That the best thing I could do for my mother to help her would be to get out of the way so she could take care of business. That's what our great parent is telling us. Y'all need to sit your little butts down in the corner somewhere and get rid of that idea of guilt and sin so you can enjoy playing with your toys while I'm making dinner. Because that idea of guilt and sin keeps you from even being able to enjoy your own children's blocks and toys. That toy house you want, that toy car you want, that toy relationship you want, that toy career you want, those toy clothes you want, that toy body you want. These are our toys. They're just toys. Children's toys. 
that we have felt, we have learned to feel guilty about desiring, wanting, playing with, and it's an enormous waste of time. On, I, I doubt if a person on that so-called deathbed is going to say as their last statement, I wish I had it done more overtime. <laughs> Think about that. Think about that sometimes. Think about what you put your energy into all day because that is what you are going to experience. It's what you put your energy into all day. So if my reality is coming from ideas, then what I need uh, is what? some good ideas, some new ideas. That's what the Course in Miracles has. That's what many spiritual books have. They have the ideas that I need that will create the perception that will give me peace and joy. I don't even have to figure those out. They've, they're given to me if I'll take the time to study or read. They're already there. Every, every sentence that you could say to yourself that if that sentence was manifested, it would be like, I am sustained by the love of God. I would love to see that idea manifest rather than I am sustained by whether or not my resume is acceptable. <laughs> Your resume is going to be acceptable when you've decided to have a job. Even in a time of low employment, if you sincerely desire to have a job as a child of God, you will manifest a job. I guarantee you, don't pay attention to one single solitary thing that the news tell you about anything that has to do with what can happen to you in your life. Do not pay any attention to anything that people who believe that they are victims and that they're not in touch with their spiritual power tells you about anything. Don't go to unconscious people asking advice about what you should do in your life. How do you know someone's unconscious? They're in fear. They are judging. They are condemning. They think they're separate from everything and everybody. A person like that is not the person that you go to for any other reason other than seeing how not to be. How not to be. Some people are great teachers in what to never do to have good relationships, what to never to do, <laughs> to never do to have prosperity. And you know you know them. You might be that for some people yourself. But it's a new day now. It's a new day now, and I'm here to tell you that you already succeeded. You already succeeded. You have already succeeded. You have already succeeded. You have already reached enlightenment. You have already reached enlightenment. Don't know it, and you're just seeing what you went through to get there. Your life, as you experience it, you're just seeing this relationship you're in right now. That was the relationship you went through to get to enlightenment. That job you have right now, that was the job you went You are looking at what's already happened. Seeing what you went through to come to the love of yourself. If you were to look at it as if you were doing that, it would speed the whole process up. 30 years of teaching, 30 years of learning, telling you some tips. Look at it as if I am already love. Love is already real. I have some blocks in my mind that's keeping me from recognizing it right now. Or whatever I'm experiencing right now was part of what I went through in order to come to that realization of love. And then you won't condemn the reality that you're in right now. Because that's what causes fear and conflict. Why does that feel like fear, though? Because everything I'm saying is totally undermining every way that you've probably been taught. And of course, that would bring up some fear. The part of you that believes in the world would not like what I'm saying. That makes perfect sense that, that you would have some fear come up when you hear the things that I'm saying. Because the part of you that believes opposite is either going to sleep right now and unconscious, or possibly listening and going, oh my God, I'm scared. I'm, I'm, I, know, I, I know that I'm the victim of that situation. What are you talking about? That's why this is not for everybody. And I don't even expect what I'm saying to be for everybody. It's not. There are people who would come in this room and everything I'm saying would sound completely nuts to them and they would have, but that's okay, I don't care. That's not who I'm here to teach, is someone who doesn't want to hear what I have to say. So I can just bless them, because if it's the truth, they got to learn it sooner or later anyway, that they want to learn it 10 lifetimes or 10 hours from now, 10 months from now, 10 years from now. They're going to still one day go, God, I'm innocent. I create my reality. I'm not a victim. I could be loving every day. I could have abundance all the time because I'm loved by a loving creator. They're going to come to that conclusion if it's 10 hundred lifetimes from now. But they may not be ready to do it today. But should that change what I do or what I say? Of course not. Since I'm not invested in whether or not they accept it right now or not, then we can have total peace. But can you accept it and still have some fear? That's what I just said. If you are accepting it, you're going to have some fear come up because your old self believes different from what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, but here's the thing. 
focus on the solution. Focus on your innocence. Focus on what you say you want. Don't worry about the part of you that doubts. Just accept it. The Course in Miracles teaches that if you will accept, this is, this, might, this is going to be one of those statements that's kind of tricky for people to hear. But if you have tolerance for your weakness, it won't have any power over you. Mm. It's intolerance for weakness that gives it a lot of energy. Mm. If I go, you know what, I don't love everybody right now, and that's just the way it is, but I'm working on learning how to love people and let love come through me. See, now it's not stopping me. But if I go, I can't go any further until I don't have any doubt. Mm -hmm. I'm stopped right there. But if I go, you know what, I got some doubt. My doubt comes and goes, and guess what? I'm going to still choose for peace. Even though I have anger right now, I'm still going to set the goal for peace. That's where you do it. You don't condemn yourself. You don't judge yourself. You don't beat yourself up for feeling not good about yourself right now. Just go, today I feel like crap, and I'm going to still keep on studying and, and focusing on the truth and, and trying to learn how to love myself more. Instead of spending all day trying to make sure you don't feel like crap. Just go, I'm crappy today, but I'm going to be all right. It's like a cloud. It's like a cloud. Your negative feelings and emotions, as you call them negative feelings and emotions, are just clouds. And the sun is always behind the clouds. That's one of the things I love about flying. Yeah. And sometimes I leave Denver, and it's a cloudy day, and I watch that plane go, and all of a sudden I'm in the sunlight looking down on the clouds. That's what happens when you do spiritual yeah. work. You go from being under the cloud to above the cloud, mm -hmm. seeing the sun and seeing the clouds. But when you're below the clouds, it's like there's no sun. And if you're in a lot of fear and conflict right now, and it looks like there's no light in your life, you're below the clouds. But I'm here to tell you, guess what? I'm the son of God. You are the son of love. You are the son of truth. The son. Do you hear that word? Son. 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 So you can identify with the cloud, or you can identify with the sun because you're free. But it won't change the fact that you're the sun. S-U-N. The light. S-U-N. You are the light. You are the light. You are the light. You are the light. Mm -hmm. You are the light. And you owe it to everybody you know to let yourself have joy and happiness. Mm -hmm. you, you, the cruelest thing you can do for your friends and relatives and the people you love is to not allow yourself to be joyful, to not allow yourself to be joyful. Mm -hmm. They need to see it, to know that it even exists. Yes. You know, and when you don't feel joyful, that's your call for love and be gentle with yourself because you are also learning. You are a learner readiness is not mastery. So if you want to get rid of your fear right now, realize it is a thought. It is an idea in your mind, and then, it, you, then you come up with images to match that idea, then you project the fearful images outward, and then you meet them in the form of accidents, burglaries, upset, illness, all that stuff you meet, they're just manifestations of fear thought. How do you get rid of them? You, you use them to remind you of love thoughts. You go, ah, oh, mm, this is what you say to yourself. I have done all this. I must undo it. But I have no idea how I did this. <laughs> yeah. I say it again. I have done this. I must undo it. If you wrote this down, if you took these three sentences and you used them all week, you would watch a transformation in your reality happen. Okay, Even right. if you don't believe it. I'm understand, down. you don't have to believe it. 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 Thinking that you have to believe it, it can become an excuse not to use it. It's a trick. If you say, I can't use this idea or because I don't believe it, you're missing my whole point. You're missing my whole point if you say, I can't do this because I don't believe I'm innocent. I don't believe I love. I'm loved. I don't believe God is there. That's what this book is for. It's for people who don't believe. It's the path of the unbeliever. It's the person that doesn't know that love is real all the time. What loved us, what created us, loved us so much that it even created a path for those who don't believe. Cool. And I don't believe sometimes. Does anybody else don't believe sometimes? Yeah. Am I the only one that don't believe sometimes? No. Okay, so okay, this is the path for the unbeliever sometimes. Okay, the unbeliever sometimes path. Okay, so here it is. I have done all, I love this, I have done all this. I must undo it. But I have no idea how I did this. I have no idea how my unforgiveness created my car breaking down. I don't see no connection between those two things. 
One of the biggest things that helped me believe in the truth was watching the difference in how often my automobiles had problems. <laughs> when I was totally into anger, guilt, fear, and all that stuff, man, I was having breakdowns because my car was symbolic of my own self and my own mobility. Mm -hmm. Everything here is a symbol. And when I didn't love myself more and I felt more guilty, then I was always having things break down. As I began to accept that it was just a car, it was just, a, I, like the other day, I, had a, I walked out and I saw a scratch, you know, it's like, ugh! You know, it's like, oh my God, I'm acting like I'm my car. It's like when somebody run into you, you go, somebody hit me today. They didn't hit you, they hit your car, right? And so it's, it's, this boy said to me, hey, it's a machine. Love it, appreciate it, but it's a machine. It's in the world of form. Anything in the world of form will not last. Mm. There's nothing in the world of the of form that will last. So if you're trying to have an eternal car, you're going to be disappointed. There's no such thing as an eternal car, an eternal television. So I'm always freaking out about things breaking down or wearing out where a conscious being knows that's what's going to happen in the illusionary world of form. So I would have more peace. So I have done all this. I must undo it, but I have no idea how I did this. Therefore, I must surrender to something else. I don't know how. Therefore, I must surrender to something else. Just one more statement I'm going to give you at the end. So, would you acknowledge yourself for hearing this much? I can't believe it's two o'clock already. Oh, my God. To yourself. To yourself. Yeah, to yourself. Because remember, the world is going to reflect back to you how you feel about you. Yeah, when you acknowledge you, then you attract acknowledgement. Absolutely. So, thank you. I'm going to do the love offering right now. Thank you for sharing with me. Appreciate that so much. Thank you for sharing. All that you give is given to yourself. For real. Yeah. You know. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. I just look at this as an opera. <laughs> <laughs> Getting kind of personal that might seem. I just look at this as an opportunity to, to, to give and receive love. I look at this as, as an opportunity to look at everybody in this class and see them as innocent and deserving of love. That's my real function. It has nothing to do with the words that I use. I could care less about words. Words just help facilitate concentration. They help you just focus in on the thing that you want. But it's not the words that make the change. It's really the love in your heart that makes the change. So it's not an intellectual trip, even though ideas and concepts are helpful because we need to have new ideas introduced in order for us to focus in on them and allow them to become our physical reality. And forgiving yourself simply means that you have the correct perception of yourself. It doesn't mean you're overlooking what you think someone did to you. When you forgive somebody, it just means that I'm seeing this situation correctly. And I'm seeing this situation in a way that I'm not giving my peace away anymore. So at the point you're not giving your peace, your peace away because you realize it's an attack on yourself, then you know some real forgiveness is happening. And I'll tell you the surefire way to know when you're forgiven. It will be when you're happy and when you're joyful because that is forgiveness. Happiness is forgiveness. Mm -hmm. If you want to forgive people quick, the, the, the more fulfilled you become in your life, the more you'll be willing to go, hey, you know what? That doesn't even really mean anything to me anymore. I'm, I'm really beyond that. Only miserable people hang on to grievances forever. It, you know, it's, as you become more joyful, you, you go, you know what? I don't even have time to, to, to focus in on what happened to me 10 weeks ago or 10 years ago. So, you, so just, just give yourself, give yourself joy. Yes. And if you don't know how, ask. Go, what would it take for joy to show up in my life in ways beyond my wildest imagination through the Holy Spirit? Put it in a question. <laughs> what would it take for joy to show up in my life? See, I just, it just happened. Ask for joy to show up and she came right here. See? Woo! See, that's just a manifestation. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you. My goodness. I tell you. That was a reflection of an idea. <laughs> All right. So I would like for you to say something with me for 30 seconds. Okay. Would you say that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Go, it would go something like this. All things I think I see reflect ideas. All things I think I see reflect ideas. Say what? All things I think I see reflect All 
things I think I see reflect ideas. All things I think I see reflect. They get loud when it go. All things I think I see reflect ideas. 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 Now I am juicy and cute. like to see manifest in your life. Everybody silently, silently think of something you would love to see projected into your physical world right now. Something you love to see in your physical world right now. Something you would love to see projected in your world right now, right now, right now, right now. Put it in the form of a question and you will perceive it a lot faster and go, what would it take for blank to show up in my life in ways beyond my wild? imagination. You want it to be beyond your wildest imagination. Yeah. How can I have blank show up in my life beyond my wildest imagination and through the Holy Spirit, the higher self, I want to put my divine self in charge of the manifestation because I am sustained by the love of God. I am sustained by the love of God. So there. <laughs> Give it up, Holy Spirit. Woo! Give it up. Woo! Hugs are totally available for those who like them. Woo! And remember, all things you think you see reflect the ideas in your mind. So ask yourself, what are the ideas I'd like to see manifested in my life right now? Because you're powerful and juicy and cute. See you next time, God. All right. Appreciate y'all. Yum! 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 Yum. <laughs> <laughs>